Hey guys, welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to look at the state machine itself and check out states and transitions. The state machine is what is responsible for determining when and where we transition into and out of individual animations. So we're gonna check out what the actual state machine is and kind of how it works and then look at individual states, which are just, in this case, individual animations that the machine is responsible for determining when we go into those animations and when we go out of those animations. So we have a walk animation and we're walking. When does that walk animation become a run animation? Oh, it becomes a run animation when we're going at this speed. But we don't want to just jump into that new animation. We want to transition into it. We want to blend into it so it doesn't look like we abruptly started running. We want to kind of smoothly start running. And to do that, we're going to look at a few different things later on. But for now, we're going to look at transitions, which is what allows us to define conditions to get from one animation or one state into another state. So let's check that out really quick in Unity. Now we created our animator asset here, and that's what we're looking at right here in this grid. Now with it selected, if I hit shift space, it will make everything uh, that I had selected and focused on full screen. So we can work in this very nicely, just like this. So what we have first of all are a few default states, or at least points that we can come into and go out of other states. And this, whole grid represents an entire state machine itself. So any state, entry and exit. So what I wanna look at here first, before we go over these, is I wanna grab an animation, bring it in here, and then check out what the state looks like as it is represented in this state machine. So if I wanna go down, and I wanna just go search in the search bar here. I know this the standard assets comes with a bunch of nice animations. And again, later on, we're gonna find some more third-party animations to use. But what I'm gonna do is say T colon animation clip. And that allows me to look at all of the animation clips. And I'm going to zoom out of this so we can actually read the words here. What I wanna do just to look at this, let's grab humanoid walk and I'll drag that in. Now notice we have a line coming from entry over to humanoid walk, and we'll get into that here in a second. And then maybe we'll have humanoid run as well and drag that in. Now this one's gray and that one's orange, and we have a line coming from that one. So what's going on here is entry is the starting point of this state machine. It's where it comes from to go into something else, to start the first state or to start the first animation. And now this one, since it was the first animation I dragged in, is by default the default starting active state. If I right click on this, we can see it is already set as the layer default state, which means this will be the first animation to play whenever this state machine is activated, which if we keep in mind here, whenever this animator is instantiated, Ethan, the controller, is active. So if I were to right click on this one and say set as layer default state, now that line goes from entry up to that. And now this line will later on represent what a transition is. But for now, it's just saying, hey, you'll come from entry, which can be the path between a different state machine and this state machine, or it can just be the starting point of the only state machine, which in this case is exactly what it is. Now I could say we can come from any state, right click, make transition, go up to humanoid run, which means I would come in from any other state and go straight into humanoid run. Or if nothing else is happening, this will be the default state that is activated. And that gives me a transition, which we'll get into here in a bit. But let's just delete that for now and see how this is going to work. So let's make our walk animation the default because we wanna start walking first. And we're just gonna play around with some animations to see what we can do with them. Now I'm gonna right click humanoid walk and do make transition again and say, hey, we can go from humanoid walk straight into humanoid run. Now what we can do is define conditions that says if this condition is met, then we go into humanoid run, which is what we're going to do later on whenever we want to control it, say with input or based on speed, or if I were to hit the jump button, things like that would invoke a transition. But in this case, we don't have that stuff set up. So we're just gonna go straight from humanoid walk straight into humanoid run. But what I wanna do is do that right out the gate. Once humanoid walk is complete, then go into humanoid run. 
So to check this out, I'm going to take my animator, drag it down here so we can see what's happening with it. And I'm also going to just click play right here. And we see, let's get a better view of this. Let's click play, go back into my scene view. And we see him start to walk and then go straight into running. And he's just running indefinitely. Now that's an animation and we can see the animation playing. If I pause this here, we can see the animation playing and looping over and over from humanoid run. Now the reason it's doing that is because we have no exit from humanoid run. We go from walk straight into run and then nothing else. What I could do if we stop this, I could go from humanoid run straight into exit. And since I have nothing else to do, all that's going to do is loop back into entry and just keep doing that over and over. So let's check that out. Let's get up on him here. He walks and then runs, walks and then runs. You can see what's happening. It goes choo, 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 choo. And that's what it's doing. Pretty cool. So we're going into the exit there. What about if we didn't go to exit, but we just went back and forth? We can go up to run and then back down to walk. And still having the entry because we have to start somewhere. Try this out doing the same thing because we're just looping back and forth. Now with humanoid walk selected, we can look at some of the properties that this state has and properties that apply to the animation clip as well. So first of all, we have the animation clip that is humanoid walk. Notice we can add any of these clips in there instead, but this is one we want to use. We can also rename it. I could just name it walk just like that. We have speed, which is pretty self-explanatory, but if I were to speed this up, it'll just speed it up times 10 in that case. So he's just, when he's in that state, he's really fast. Just speeds up the animation itself. And we have a multiplier, which can be based on a parameter, which we'll get into in a bit. We don't have parameters in use yet. Normalized time can be based on a parameter as well, but once again, we don't have that. Mirror is simply going to mirror the animation from left to right, forward to back, whatever you'd like to do there. And there's a bunch of stuff here that we will simply not be using, for, such as foot IK, uh, inverse kinematics, which is good for accurate foot placement on different types of terrain and all that kind of stuff. But in this case, all we care about in here for now is going to be our list of transitions. So I can transition out of walk into humanoid run and then out of run back into walk. And what I can do is look at exactly how this is doing that. So if I go to the settings of the transition out of walk into run, we see a bunch of stuff. We have has exit time, which means we cannot transition out of walk, since we're going out of here with this transition, until the state is complete, until the animation clip has completely played. So what that means is, if I don't have this, and there's no conditions defined for our transition, it's always just going to snap out of walk, because there's nothing keeping it there. But if I have it defined, I could say, well, you know, we could wait five seconds before we come out of that. And that'll just walk for a while, and then five seconds later, we will transition out and then back in and then five seconds later, you get the idea. Fixed duration is going to be the length the transition takes. Uh, so if I were to set this up to be a higher speed, the transition between one to the next state will be a lot slower. So it'll take us longer to transition. So if we had to have a, be a snappy switch from walking to running, you'd want this to be a lower value. Whereas if you want it to be a slower transition, you make it a higher value. Pretty simple stuff. And the transition offset here, you can actually see that we can drag these actual handles around and do this in here ourselves and it will change the values for us. This is a nice representation of what it's going to look like in the end. Interruption source is simply saying, what can interrupt this transition? The current state's changing can interrupt it. The next state's changing can interrupt it. If you go from the current state into the next state or from the next state into the current state. Now, these are more uh, technically specific things that, again, we won't be using for this, but they are there if you need them. So I could just drag in idle, make it the default, go from that to walk, from walk into that, and then from run back into walk. Let me just drag these around here. So he goes from idle, into walk, into run. Idle, walk, run. Very cool. In the next lesson, guys, we are going to check out those animator parameters and also check out some of the conditionals that we can use with those parameters. My name is Austin, and I will see you next time.